Hi, this is Phil, Dirty Drive Away. So as the title of this video suggests, today we're going to be doing a strip and rebuild on a Mossmatic DYCI swivel head. Now these heads are quite popular um, in the surface cleaners. Um, they're probably a common fitment in all the Mossmatic um, surface cleaners. Um, but, Moss, but Mossmatic themselves actually do a retrofit conversion kit, which is what I've done. So basically they sell the head um, and some adapter plates that you can then fit these into other surface cleaners such as Whirlaways and you know different brands. Um, obviously you'd need to modify and fit those yourself. And the benefit to that is obviously these Mossmatic heads are far superior. Um, they're all stainless steel. Uh, they allow for higher pressures um, and also they uh, they spin quite fast. Um, so yeah, they're not they're not cheap. Um, this this conversion kit I think is around four or four hundred and fifty pounds. So it's probably on par with actually buying a complete new world away surface cleaner. But then obviously in comparison to what a Mossmatic surface cleaner costs you, which are in excess of a thousand pounds, it's uh, quite a worthwhile investment um, just to be able to fit one of their heads into an existing unit. So today we're going to be um, basically stripping this apart uh, and showing you what's inside. Uh, now there's one thing that I cannot stand um, is being ripped off and obviously I've looked at the prices of getting rebuild kits for these um, heads um, and the bearings and a single o-ring seal kit they're, they're stupid money they're like 75 pounds um, so I don't like being ripped off I like to be able to take things apart and have a look for myself and see what's in them sometimes you do find that obviously these companies do have things that are specifically manufactured just for their units and thus you have to buy them directly from them um, but in, in this case of this head, they're all commonly available parts are inside. Uh, there's a couple of basically, well, you know, they're like skateboard bearings, they're, they're bigger, but they're, they're commonly available bearings. You've got an axial thrust bearing and about five O-rings, so there's nothing too taxing inside. You might need a couple of uh, special tools to get into these. Um, the actual head itself is in two parts. Um, the hardest part of actually doing this whole procedure is actually splitting the two halves. Uh, they do use quite a, a strong sort of thread lock or a thread seal around the outside of the rather large sort of um, machine nut. It's not really a nut, but you know, for want of a better word, um, they use quite a quite a heavy seal around the outside of that. So you will need a vice or some some way to clamp this. Uh, you're going to need some kind of heat source. Um, now, Mossmatic do so you can get away with like a hot air gun. I did try that. It got nowhere near warm enough. Um, I had to use a, a blowtorch on this. Obviously, bear in mind there are O-rings inside. You know, you do want to be able to replace these um, throughout this. Um, so obviously, you may find that if you get this too hot, you will end up, you know, destroying the O-rings inside anyway. Um, so right around the inside, there is there is an O-ring. Um, but later on in this, I will go through exactly what parts are in this, um, what sizes the O-rings are. So you can buy these; they're commonly available on eBay. Um, the bearings also they're they're readily available. So moving straight into the head, this is a quality piece, it's made in Switzerland, uh, it's all stainless steel, uh, very well machined. Uh, it would have been quite nice if they had a, uh, machined some nice flats in the side of these, um, so you've got a bit more grip when you want to uh, clamp it into a vise. Um, I know Mossmatic show you a special kind of tool they've got when they clamp it in the vise, um, but obviously uh, yeah, a couple of flat pieces would have been quite nice. So here is where the two halves are, are joined together. You can basically, there's um, a lot of seal around this side in here, um, so you're going to want to get this a bit warm to try and break that sealer off. Uh, so I, the only way I found was to get it into a vise um, and uh, yeah, clamp it up, get it nice and warm, and then just crack it, crack off the uh, the top nut. I think it's about 21 mil, um, and that should loosen it off without too much aggravation. So you can see inside there, there's the top of the carbide seat. You want to be really careful of that. And on the bottom there's a very, very small O-ring, um, which basically seals the uh, extension piece for the, the spray arm. So let's get this clamped up in a vise. So we've got this uh, clamped up in a vise with some aluminium jaws. This should uh, help hold it nice and tight without do uh, doing too much damage. Um, so I've got a 22 mil nut. I said 21 earlier on, but it's 22. Um, I did find when I first did this I had to put it into the steel jaws just because it just kept turning, it kept slipping. And like I say, you will need to put some heat on this because of the sheer amount of thread lock. Now I have had this apart already so it will come apart quite loosely. Um, so don't think that yours will come apart quite this easily. 
Um, I did heat it up quite gently with a, a map torch just to get a little bit warm, not too hot, um, all the way around the outside there. Um, I said because there is quite a lot of sort of um, sealer on it. So basically, all you're going to want to do is get your 22 mil nut once you've warmed it up, and you need to you know crack it off. Um, once you've warmed it up, it will undo quite easily. Um, <clears throat> obviously, there is um, a O-ring uh, just underneath. So once you cracked it off, you should be able to spin it off by hand. You can see the O-ring just starting to come into view there. And there you have it. So there's your O-ring. That basically seals it up. All around the outside of there was was covered in a uh, like a, a thread compound. It wasn't really like a, a, a thread locker, more like a compound. So inside there, you can see your bearing uh, and your carbide seat right in the back there. D don't damage that. Um, they're very expensive to, to replace. Same as in that side, they mate up together uh, and they spin, um, and they're like a machine surface, um, rock hard. But don't damage. Don't don't go welting on that. So inside there is your common run of the mill. Um, roller bearing um, they are quite hard they can be quite hard to get out this is where you may need like a slide hammer like a blind bearing puller uh, what I'm doing off camera now is just basically wiggling it out just to try and relieve it like I said I have had this out previously so it should just pop out but you may need to get a slide hammer in there with like a blind bearing insert um, just to basically pop it out uh, don't there is no way of getting it from the other side um, without potentially damaging the seat um, you can pop the, the carbide insert out so there you go, the uh, bearings out. This one's actually still quite in good condition, um, but to be perfectly honest with you, they're quite cheap anyway. If you're gonna to go to the length of taking this apart, then you may as well just replace the whole lot. Underneath there, there is another O-ring. Um, that just basically um, would seal the top of the spinning shaft on the inside. I'll go uh, through the size of these later on in the video. So now this is the main, the main spin shaft, should we say, from the internal side, with your carbide seat there in the top. Um, that will come out, um, but it can be a little bit fiddly to get out. Um, so you're better off just leaving that in there. They can be sort of quite tight. You can try and pick it out. Um, but again, you don't want to put too much pressure on these with any kind of um, screwdriver or any kind of tool, because if you do end up taking a piece out of the top. So from the inside, that just pops straight out. Um, that is your main shaft there. Um, on the bottom there, you can see the, the bottom the bottom part at the top you've got a very small o-ring which like i said it seals the um the bottom of the arm there's like a, a very very small one mil o-ring on there and on there is the bottom part of the actual thrust bearing as you can see it's seen better days very rusty um there's the inside actual bearing and the bearing cage again rusted to hell don't know why, but they, they don't seem to be stainless steel, which is very unusual considering these are used in water, um, obviously at high high pressure, high speeds. So obviously once they start corroding, all the gunk and the rust starts to chip away and could potentially end up blocking the inside. So you can see there, it's really, really corroded. It's really pitted. That's what was giving the, the, um, the very notchy effect. Uh, it's making the whole assembly very graunchy and notchy. So basically what you're going to want to do is knock that piece off you can pop that into a vise taking extra care of that carbide seat so long as you don't touch that seat you'll be absolutely fine you can pop that in a vise and just tap gently on the other end um, with the soft face mallet it should come out quite easily um, i say in this case because i've had it apart before it will just slide off the shaft if it is quite rusty it will be a little bit more stuck um, but that's basically it to that internal shaft assembly So going back to the top cap, that main carbide seat in there actually will just pop out. Um, it's held in with just the uh, just a small O-ring. So you can just pop that out because we're gonna be changing the O-ring on the inside. So just give it a gentle push and you will find that the uh, carbide seat will just, will just pop out the middle of the bottom, just like so. Now be careful, there is a very small thin wave washer on there. Do not lose that. Obviously it is part of the, the seat. Um, if you lose it, I don't know what happened, but it's there for a reason, so don't use that. Don't lose that, pop that to the side. Let's get some better light here on this subject so we can see clearer. So go back to the top cap, you can see all the internals are, 
are out. Now, right in the back there, you can't really see it. There is a very small O-ring on the inside, which is what that carbide seat seals on. So getting a small engineer's pick, um, you can just ease that O-ring out of the inside. So I'm just gonna try and pick it out off camera here. Um, it's very hard to try and do these things on camera with the, the cameras in the way and the picks in the way and your arms are in the way. So there you go, you can just see it just starting to come out the inside. They can be quite stiff, but they will pop out a little bit of perseverance and there she comes. So just a standard run of the mill O-ring. Um, I do like to use Viton O-rings. Again on here, there's the outside, the larger of the O-rings that we have, which seals the top cap to the main body. Um, that is a 40 mil by two millimeter O-ring, quite a large one. Uh, and that's the smaller in internal O-ring. They are, again, they're two millimeter O-rings. They're all two mil O-rings, apart from that little one you saw earlier on that seals the main arm. Um, so that, that little one that sort of seals the spray arm, that's a 14 mil by one millimeter O-ring. Again, I'll list all the O-rings later on so you can see what they are. So taking this out, I'm going to get rid of all those rusty shavings. Don't want them lurking around. Just tap them off in the bin. Um, it was pretty badly corroded in there. And there is another O-ring on the inside. So there is five O-rings on, um, on this unit that we are going to be replacing. Um, a little bit of light, you can just see on the inside. Now that will come out if you do pull the um, internal, um, the other bearing race, if you pull that out, you can, that will just fall out like the top one did. Um, if you've got your engineer's pick, you can just pick that O-ring out. That is a, again, a two mil O-ring. That's a 20 mil, um, 20 mil by two millimeter O-ring. And there is two of them in this housing unit, in this, in this unit. So there's one at the top, one at the bottom underneath each of those bearings. So you can see that bottom is quite, quite well rusted. As I have had out before, um, that bottom piece will come out fairly easily, but it can get quite stuck. And this is where you may need your slide hammer with a blind bearing insert. Sometimes you can be gentle and you can tap it on the inside. If you can get it at the right angle, you can just tap on the inner race of the bearing and it will pop out if you are replacing the bearings anyway. It's not really an issue. Just obviously if you end up smacking on it too hard, you can end up damaging the bearings. So you may find that a blind bearing slide hammer may be a better option if you have one. But you don't necessarily need to go and buy one, especially just for this, unless you get really, really stuck. So I'm just going to try and wiggle that inner race bearing, that inner race of the bearing out um, like I said it has been apart before so it should come out quite quite easily um, so there we go there's the uh, there's the, the bottom part of the race and there is the other um, smaller ball bearing um, so there's two of those bearings and there's one of the axial thrust bearings in the whole assembly there would normally be on on these there will be stamped uh, on the outside edge you can see there that the the three half three pieces going together and it is just nasty um, but yeah normally on the outside of the bearings they are stamped what the um, the model number or the part number of the, of the bearings um, but obviously in the case of that axial thrust bearing because it was so corroded and rusty you couldn't see the actual um, bearing number on the outside so so let's um, just run through some of the bearings we've got um, and obviously some of the o-rings that so there's uh, one of your main bearings. You have two of them in the kit alongside the O-ring. And that there you see in your hand is what you would get in the bearing rebuild kit, which would cost you 75 pounds. Two main bearings, one thrust axial bearing and one small O-ring. You may possibly get two O-rings. I've not seen the kit, but even so, for 75 pounds, that is extortionate, extortionate money. So basically, I'm gonna run through some of the parts here now. So you can see, so that is a standard bearing. That is a 618042RS bearing. Um, the S stands for stainless. So they're all stainless um, cages, uh, races on the outside. So that is a 618042RS. And there are two of them. And you can buy them on eBay or online. And they're, they're about four pounds and some pennies each. So they're not horrifically expensive. So I'm just going to grab that main axial bearing now. So this bearing here is an S51104 thrust axial bearing. So it's S for stainless, 51104. Uh, and you can buy them again online or from a bearing supplier. Um, and they are around about nine pound and 10 pence each. That's what I paid for it, delivered to my door. Um, I've got them and the other two bearings from a bearing supplier. 
Um, they came. They're a um, they're a Chinese bearing, but they're man. They're German. They're kind of German precision. So basically, they're you know it's a German bearing that's basically shipped off to China for manufacturing. So you're getting a German quality bearing at a Chinese price, basically. Um, not exactly sure on the name of the company that makes that Zen or something. I think it is. Um, but again, you can buy these on eBay. Uh, considering the one that's in there from standard only lasting about six and seven months. Um, I think anything you pay, be it nine pound, ten pound, or whatever, I think it is better than um, than paying the seventy five for the new kit, as they're probably not going to last you anywhere near as long. And again, those two bearings there again, they were S six one eight zero four two RSs, um, so you need two of them, so they'll come to about eight pound and fifty p delivered, um, you know, eight pounds and pennies delivered to your door. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that shaft. So that small O ring on there, that was a fourteen millimeter by one. So basically it's a one millimeter O-ring with the 14 millimeter um, outside uh, OD. So that's one mil by 14, 14 by one. If you just go, um, go onto eBay and just search one millimeter O-rings, then you drop down box, you just put up 14 millimeters. Now I've got a pack of 10 of them. Again, all of these O-rings are Vitten. Uh, I've got a pack of 10 of them for the, uh, the sum of three pounds 75. So not that expensive, considering all the O-rings you'll get, you could you know, service this multiple times over. So there it is, I've just picked it off. Very, very small. Obviously it is ideal to have a pack of 10 because they can be, they can be, um, they can rip. So there again, is a, there's a big O-ring that you saw around the outside that seals the two halves together. That is a two millimeter O-ring with a 40 millimeter OD. So that's a 40 by two mil. They're all two mil apart from that small thin one. Again, I got a pack of 10 of those for the sum of £6.42p. Um, so enough to service it plenty of times. This one here is again is a 2mm O-ring. They're the ones that seal the um, carbide seat area. Uh, and that's 10mm by 2mm. It goes over that carbide seat just like so. So again, it's another 2mm O-ring with a 10mm OD. So inside there, remember that's where that's where that little O-ring sat was in the inside. It sat with the carbide seat. You, know, you put a little bit of lube on there before you push the carbide seat back in. Um, just help it stop it from pulling on the O-ring when you go to reinsert it. Last but not least, you have the other two O-rings which go beneath the um, the, the other, other bearings. Again, they're two millimeters by 20 millimeters. Uh, I've got a pack of 25 of those for £7.44. And those smaller O-rings you saw previously, the two millimeter by 10 millimeters, again, I got 25 of those for the sum of £5.82p. So not that much money. Um, all in all, I managed to pick up the entire, so the two bearings, the main axial bearing, and the equivalent of each individual O-ring, so five O-rings in total, with the three bearings come to the Total price of eighteen pounds and ninety six pence. So all in all, not that much money. So a complete service kit for less than twenty pounds. So I do tend to find that the uh, bearings don't come with a particularly large amount of grease in them. So I like to just pop the seals out of both sides. Um, just add a little more grease, just so just so I know they are sufficiently lubed up. Um, you don't need to overpack these. Um, just a small amount around the outside. Uh, you pop, you pop the seals out with a small blade, a uh, little standing plate or something, and add some grease. And uh, my grease of choice for these, I do quite like the Castrol Sphero EPL2, uh, which is uh, this stuff here in the, uh, the tube. Um, yeah, it's good high-speed bearing grease. Um, it's good for uh, high loads and fast, fast spinning actions. So we're going to be moving on now to the reassembly. So we're going to start out. <coughs> Here's all the O-rings, not many. So I have the um, internal shaft here in my hand, so we're just going to pop a new 14 by one millimeter O-ring over there. Again, these can be quite tight, um, and obviously if your threads are sharp, they can can rip the O-ring. So just be a little bit careful when fitting these. Hence the reason why I bought packs of 10, just because they are so thin, they they can split if you've got um, a sharp edge um, or you accidentally nick it. Uh, best thing to do is just to get your engineer's pick and just um, basically just slide it underneath the O-ring. And then just move it, move round and round and round, and you'll find that it will just pop back into the, uh, the lower section of that shaft without any aggravation. Just give it a visual check afterwards, make sure you've not nicked it or you've caught it, uh, or taken any chunks out of it, because obviously that will hinder it. 
Um, obviously, if you do break it, just pop it off, take a new one. So there we have the uh, first part of the main thrust axial bearing. There's the three parts together. So you're going to want to take one piece, one one part of the, uh, the outer outer race, and um, as you can see, the number stamped on there, the S five one one zero four, so they're stainless. And that simply again just slides on. You shouldn't need any any physical force on that. Um, it should just pop straight on fairly easily, um, without any any kind of uh, hammer or uh, other impact related issues. Um, so we've got the uh, bottom section here, and there's going to be a um, O-ring in the bottom. So that's going to be one of the two millimeter by forty, uh, sorry, two millimeter by twenty millimeter O-rings. So again, there are you do need two of these for either side of the bearing. Um, so just basically just pop it in, just like so. Nothing, nothing hard. You can take your other bearing that you've just previously added a little bit more grease to. Again, that should just push straight in. You shouldn't need any force on that whatsoever. And then lastly, you've got the other part of the thrust actual bearing, which again should just push straight in. Um, these can, these might need a little bit more um, force to, to put in. There, there should be a slightly interference fit, uh, and they should be uh, nice and flush all the way around the outside of that outer edge um, above the um, the bearing. And if you any any issues, just give it a little tap. Um, nothing too hard. Just a soft face mallet on the inside. Um, just just tap it in, just so it sits nice and flush around the outside. If it is got a slight kink to it, you'll find it'll be a bit bit graunchy on the bearings. So just make sure it is flat and flush all around the outside of there. So now taking your main bearing and bearing cage, just apply some grease. <clears throat> You're going to want quite a liberal amount of uh, grease on this bit here. Obviously, there's no other way externally. Uh, the world ways do have a grease nipple. Uh, these Mossmatic heads don't have grease nipples, so all the grease you're putting on here is going to be in here until you next come to service it. So put a nice, nice liberal amount of grease all around the outside. Give the bearings a little roll in your hands just to make sure there's there's plenty in between little cracks and crevices. Obviously, don't don't put stupid amounts in. Um, just put enough in there so you know all the all the, all the balls are, are well coated with grease. And then you just take take the bearing race, and you're going to want to pop it back over the the shaft. Um, so that it sits on one of the um, sits on the I say the inner inner race section. So you've got there, you've got a, your two races. Put a little smear of grease on the inside of that, and with the um, the shaft, you've got your bearings there on the inside. And then take your shaft and just pop your shaft through. Put a little bit of lube on the outside of your shaft, so it doesn't catch on the O-rings on the inside. And then just pop your shaft through the middle. Like so, you just pop it in, and that is it. That's the main internals all done. You can feel that now. It's all nice and smooth. There's no, there's no roughness, no graunching. Bearings are all smooth. So we're going to want now. We're going to want to clamp the um, the main body back into the vise. Obviously, using the soft jaws so you don't damage it. Taking the top cap, remember you have got a little O-ring that goes in there, that's your small two millimeter by 10 millimeter O-ring. These can be quite fiddly to, to reinstall um, because the O-rings are quite small. Um, sometimes I do find you, know, you pop it in, hold it in with like a little screwdriver or a small little pick and just work the O-ring in. It will go in, it might take a little bit of perseverance. I say it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, um, but with a little bit of perseverance, you'll get it. So there's your, uh, Carbide seat, don't forget that wave washer. It's there for a reason, so put it back in. I don't know what it would do if you don't fit it, but like I say, it's, it's there, so it must have an intended purpose. Around the outside of the cap, you can see that there are some recesses, some small grooves, and the matching grooves on the outside of that carbide seat. Just simply push in, and it will lock into place. It will stop that carbide seat from spinning inside the housing. Next, you're going to want to take one of your O-rings. Again, that's a two millimeter by 20 millimeter O-ring. Again, all of these O-rings are bitten. Just pop the O-ring back inside. Again, can be a little bit fiddly. Perseverance, it just pushes in. It's not, it's not a tight fit. Just ends up pushing itself in. It's just like so. Then taking the other bearing, which again, we pre-greased earlier. Once again, that should just push in. It shouldn't need any, any kind of 
physical force involved in that. Just pop straight into the top housing. And lastly, you've got your two millimeter by 40 millimeter O-ring. Little bit of lube on the outside. Just slide that over the threads, wash it all the way down to the bottom. Now these O-rings are a little bit loose, so they're not a tight fit on there, um, but the, the lube, putting a little bit of lube on it will just help so it doesn't catch up when you go to thread it back into the main body. So the next thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to give this a little, little wipe off. Obviously you should have cleaned it earlier on, but we're going to give it a wipe off. We're going to put some blue medium thread locker on here. Um, my thread lock of choice is the Bondi A43, um, just because it is a lot cheaper than the uh, other brands. And it's, uh, you get more for your money. And obviously I use it quite a lot. So the Bondi A43, you can pick this stuff up on Amazon. It's, it's about seven or eight pounds for a large bottle. So it's not nowhere near as expensive as the, the leading brand of thread locker. So I'm just gonna smear some blue thread lock around the outside. Not putting silly, silly amounts on. Um, this is not really to, it's just to stop the, 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 the nut from coming undone. Um, the O-ring should do the sealing job for you. Uh, but it's more of a bit of a backup really. So put a small amount around sort of three or four threads from the bottom, wipe off any excess, and then just screw the cap back on. The little bit of lube that you put around the top O-ring will just help it to, to go in without too much of an issue. I say if you put the O-ring in dry, you may find it might it may catch up on the on the body on the inside and can run the risk of spitting your O-ring. Once you've got that in, just simply do it up, nipping the nut up with your 22mm spanner. Again, you might have to put a bit of force on your vise to hold this in. Um, it is obviously being round, a couple of nice flats on there, like I said, would, would, would be more beneficial. Uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. But just basically do that up as tight as you can. The thread lock will do the rest. Keep it nice and secure. The O-ring will keep it sealed. The thread lock will keep it from coming undone. So you can see the whole, whole process. It's not that hard, it's not that big a job. As long as you've got access to a few commonly available tools, especially advice to hold this, this thing in. You should have no issues getting this out. As you can see, lovely and smooth, back to how it was, how it should be. There's no notchiness, no graunching. It's back to being factory, hopefully for uh, another another six months of, of use. And uh, yeah, basically what you've got to do now is just fit it back into your, into your surface cleaner, fit your spray arm, connect it all up, and away you go. So before I sign off, here's a complete list of all the parts that I used. Breaking it all down for you. Obviously you can pause it here if you um, if you want to take a take a note. You've got your 14 by one millimeter, your 40 by two, your 10 by two, your 20 by two, your S51104 bearing, which is your main thrust bearing, and two of your S61804 2RS bearings. So you need two of them. Obviously I've worked it all out, I forgot to add on the second bearing. So it comes in at £18.96p for the whole lot. But obviously that includes 10 of each of the top two bearings and 25 of the bottom two bearings. So all in, you can you can service this less than £20. All you have to do next time is buy your, buy your additional bearings, which, you know, at £19.10p and was it £8.32 and pence for the other bearings, it's really something you could do every six months. So that's it from me. I hope you found this useful and you put it to good use. It's not a scary task. That's all from me. Happy cleaning. Bye for now.